Are you a voiceover actor, a filmmaker, or you're interested in starting up your own podcast? I've got some really easy DIY tips for getting you started. In my case, I use my wife's closet. Welcome to my studio. If you're interested in setting up a home voiceover booth, it only takes a few items that are really important. The first and most important item is the talent. You bring your own voice, so make sure that you get plenty of sleep, gargle some salt water, you know, get yourself prepared to record some good quality content. The second thing that you need is a microphone. In this case, this is a cardioid pattern condenser microphone. Another thing that you'll need is a recording device. That could be your computer, and that could be a portable audio recorder or an audio interface. It's a place where you store that sound and you're able to transfer those files to your client or into your video or you use them as part of your recording. The third thing that you'll need is a boom arm or some sort of a stand to suspend that microphone that's very sensitive to vibrations and movements. I was able to construct mine using some off-the-shelf parts and I'll link in the description on exactly what those parts were and I'll go into more detail in a future video that kind of goes over the step-by-step -step approach to building this thing because I didn't see any solution to what this does on the internet. And it solved a problem of how do you hang a microphone in a very small voiceover booth in a closet. You'll probably want something that holds your iPhone or iPad that you can read voiceover notes or script off of. Um, it's incredibly helpful and it prevents the sound of shuffling clothing as you're reading a script or attempting to. These are off the shelf parts and you'll end up saving a lot of money by building it DIY style. And I promise it'll work for you. And I found it to be incredibly beneficial because when not in use, I'm able to slide those clothes over and it becomes a fully functional closet all over again. You're also gonna want something to monitor the sound with. In my case, I've got some Sony MDR 7506s. These are really helpful to monitor good, clean, professional audio with very little um, sound enhancements going on in the frequency response curve. If you've got a cell phone, chances are it came with a set of earbuds. That'll do perfectly fine when you're recording. Make sure you find a pair of headphones or earbuds that doesn't have an open back design. And by that, I mean, doesn't leak the sound from the back of the earbud or headphone, which can actually color the sound of the audio, creating what's known as phasing issues. Aside from choosing a closet, what you really want to think about when you're setting up your home voiceover booth is to set up a space that's furthest away from sound sources. I'm talking about opening and closing doors, refrigerators, any windows, because usually outside of windows are streets and there's usually crying babies, cars passing by, sounds that you really don't want to have in your 20 hour long audio book recording. But before I talk about how to acoustically treat your space for recording professional audio, Let's talk for a moment about what sound is in general. Sound is actually generated by waves that bounce off of other objects, particularly hard objects, and collide back with the source, generating what's known as reverb or echo. So if you've ever been to a rock concert, you'll hear those screaming guitars that sound like they're echoing out of caves. They're probably actually recorded in a room that's specifically set up to recreate these types of reverb. However, if you're trying to record professional voiceover, you don't want those sound reflections. What you want to do is record in a space that is treated to absorb those sounds so that it's controlled and can be manipulated where you can add reverb in post-production if you'd like to do so. Now, as you can see, and well, actually you can't see because it's out of frame, but I'm actually sitting on a very low stool. It's very close to the floor. Luckily, my apartment has carpeting. That does a little bit of the job of absorbing the excess sound that's coming from my voice. When you're thinking about where to place foam panels, just think line of sight. If you can see it, audio is traveling there. Depending if I wanna be in a standing position or a seated position, I've made sure to line any surface that I feel my voice will be reflecting from. That does the job of killing any reflections. But honestly, when you're recording in a closet, a lot of the sound that's going to be passing around is also going to be absorbed by the clothing, which makes this both 
a pragmatic approach to creating a vocal booth, and also a pretty effective one. There are several different materials that you can use to dampen the transmission of sound. One of them is a nice acoustic panel, kind of like this. It looks a little bit like an egg crate, and that's because there are little differences in the way it's shaped that reflect sound away from your voice. So if you think of it, it's kind of like a sponge. It absorbs sound, it doesn't let anything leak out, and any sound that might leak out or re be reflected, it splashes away from you, um, which ends up giving you a more high quality recording than had you recorded without any sound diffusion at all. With just a little bit of heavy duty liquid nails glue, this guy, two to four dollars from Home Depot, and a caulk gun, again, just a couple dollars, and a few of these panels, you could have yourself a whole voiceover booth in just a matter of hours. And this panel that I showed you just a moment ago, you might think this is an expensive panel, but it's not. You can get a pack of 12 of these for $45 from Walmart. You can also find them at Amazon, and I'll be sure to link in the description below all the products I'm talking about today. Luckily, with professional quality adhesive, the process for sticking up these panels is surprisingly easy. You just take this giant caulk gun, you've got the adhesive, plenty of it in there, it's not like a you know, Gorilla Glue or anything like that, and just line, just dot the backs of your panels. And I like to do each corner and just a little dab in the middle as well, and then press it up firmly against the wall exactly where you need them. The process of removing the panels you can't, yeah, they're completely permanent. You can't do anything to remove them. Uh, no, actually it's uh, pretty easy. You'll want to sand down the spots where the adhesive was and just repaint. Um, but overall, that's a small price to pay, especially when you see some of those ISO booths that are sold for around $10,000 each. And that's much more of an eyesore than having to sand down a spot as you would with spackle and repaint over the spots where your recording studio once sat. And I know it might not look like much, but it doesn't have to look professional to sound professional. Because in the end, you don't see the sound, you hear it. So I wanted to set up this microphone so that I could showcase exactly how I would use this in a voiceover situation. This microphone is a cardioid pattern condenser mic. The cardioid pattern is referring to how sensitive the microphone is on one side or the other. In this case, the microphone is picking up sounds most effectively from this direction. Behind me, I have some acoustic panels set up, and what those do is those kill any early reflections that are coming from my voice that might be reflecting off the back wall and back into the capsule, which is not something that we want in professional recording. The other thing about this microphone is that it comes with a pop filter. A pop filter reduces plosives and sibilance, creating a cleaner, quality sound because nobody wants to hear those very potatoy peas or that sibilance that might be affecting the recording and it's really challenging to try to take that out in post-production. One other thing is uh, while I'm actually recording, these closet doors are closed and yes, they are lined with foam. Thanks again for watching. Happy recording. breakfast, lunch, and dinner.